And my very first day of radiation treatment, I walked into the hospital and wasn't even greeted nicely. I mean, certainly don't want to be there. But the nurse just looked at me and said, I said, I'm Brenda Jones. And she just pointed to the dressing room and said, go on in there and change. You're going to be wearing a hospital gown for the next seven weeks. That was my introduction. Mm -hmm. I opened up that door, and when I saw that stack of those hideous, disgusting, ridiculous-looking hospital gowns, I lost it. That was absolutely the last straw. And with tears flowing down my face, in my head I'm screaming, you know what, I've had enough. I've had enough, and this was my breaking point. So that fast as I'm standing there, up in my head pops a design, and there's a little voice that's saying, well, then make your own. And I thought, you know what, I, I call it my Vera Wang moment. <laughs> because I had, I wish I was Vera Wang. <laughs> um, because I thought, oh my gosh, I, I had this complete design of something warm because I was freezing. And so still crying, put on two hospital gowns, one one way, one the other, put my coat on. Because again, I'm freezing. A hospital gown to me screams, I'm a patient and I'm sick. And the last thing I wanted to do was flash that neon sign to the world by wearing this. So I put my coat on, went out, sat down, still crying, and talking to myself. <laughs> and the, uh, you know, again, before I sat down, I, had, I thought, I have it. One slight little problem, I don't know how to sew. But God has a way of taking care of all of us. And by the time I got home, the phone was ringing. So I'm un angrily unlocking the door. I grabbed the phone and I screamed, what? Luckily, it was my girlfriend, Judy, and she let me rant and rave and scream and holler all I wanted. And when I said, I'm going to make my own, but I don't know how to sew. I don't know how I'm going to do it, but I'm going to do it. And she said, well, you're lucky. I'm a seamstress. I'll teach you how to sew. So I spent three days in a sewing for dummies course at her house. I bought a used sewing machine, and she said, well, you're cold. You're going to need flannel fabric. Okay. Go to the store. Never been to a fabric store before. And the girl said, what are you looking for? I said, I know I want flannel. She said, how much? I said, well, this much. <laughs> and so bought like 10 yards of fabric, only needed three, and went to her house. And Judy, um, I had actually had a kimono-style wrap bathrobe and a real bathrobe. So I took both of them to my girlfriend, handed them to her. I said, give me in the middle of this. This is what I want to make. And because I had breast cancer, I could leave my pants on. So I only needed it short. I didn't need that long hospital gown. So basically, we came up with, you know, alterations and stuff. And finally, I tried on the final product. And when I put it on, it was flat. And I put it on, the first thing out of my mouth, I said, this feels like a nice warm hug. So eventually, I kind of turned to switch the words around and called it my hug wrap. I chose the brightest, loudest fabric that I could find because I wanted to wear something louder than cancer. First time I wore two treatments, never expected anyone to notice, but I walked in wearing this. And when I did, heads turned and jaws hit the floor. And I even put this on at home because I thought I am not going into that dressing room one more time. I needed to control something. I couldn't control cancer, but I could control what I wore. So I basically came up with this. And it's just a kimono style wrap, three quarter length sleeve, made of flannel so it's nice and warm. And it just opens in the front and it ties with a belt. And this is what I wore. I put this on at home, put my coat on, went to the hospital, and the nurse said, well, aren't you going to go change? I took off my coat and I said, I am. And I sat down and there was uh, one lovely lady, the only one I really talked to, uh, in there, and her name was Millie. And Millie was in her 70s and she was there for lung cancer. And she and I had treatments at the same time. So she became my buddy. And Millie looked at me and, and she grabbed a hold of it. She said, where did you get that? It looks so warm. Kind of surprised. And I said, well, I made it. You know, and she's like, it's beautiful. I said, well, would you like me to make you one? And I said, it's going to take me a while. Uh, but she's like, absolutely. So I said, well, tell me, what's your favorite? So she said, I love butterflies. And I love blue. That's fine. Go to the fabric store, find her stuff. Takes me a while. I make her this. And I give it to her. 
she starts crying. And then Melly says to me, you know what, there's another lady that I know, and she has brain cancer, and she only has three months to live. And I said, well, do you think she would want one? She says, uh, sure. So I made one for Barbara. And Barbara was amazed that I took the time to make something for someone who wasn't going to be here long. But I did it anyway. And I love you know, the one, oh, here I go. <laughs> just like you, when you talk about your sister. Woo! Um, just, you never think that something so simple can give comfort to another patient. And I'm so glad they do. So I really started making it for Millie and then Barbara. And then I realized, you know what? When I started sewing, as all of you know, we wake up in the middle of the night and we can't sleep and we just cry. And the one, and I was no exception. And there's that anger that I have too. And that is so unlike me. I'm not an angry person. So I was even surprised at the level that I reached. 